So today we're going to talk about how to build and track a Facebook dark post campaign in both Facebook Analytics and Google Analytics. And all you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start by opening up a new browser and typing in Google URL Builder. You're going to want to click the first link that comes up and simply scroll to the bottom and what you're going to want to enter right here is the website URL that you're driving your traffic to. This should be a custom landing page based on what your campaign is targeted towards. So for right now let's just pretend we're driving traffic to a Toyota site. So we're going to enter in www.toyota.com uh, your campaign source is the actual source that you're using to leverage this traffic, which is uh, in this case Facebook. Your campaign medium is your method of how you're actually obtaining this traffic. So whether that's a uh, pay-per-click campaign, an email blast, or any other digital uh, form of advertising that you might be using, that's where you want to enter this. So. Here's a pay-per-click campaign and the campaign name. This is anything that you want to call it that you're going to remember this campaign by. So we'll call it the Toyota test campaign. You're going to want to generate a URL and we're going to leave that be for a second. And what we're going to want to do from here is open up Facebook. So we'll open up a new tab, go to facebook.com. And what we're going to want to do is go to the Ads Manager section of Facebook. And from here, what we want to do is actually create a tracking pixel. So we're going to click on Tools, and we want to go to Pixels. And from here, we click on Actions. And normally, if you have not created a pixel, you will be prompted to do so here. I've already created one, so you only have the option to be able to create one. And you can edit the pixel, you can view the pixel code, or you can email the pixel. Once you've uh, created your pixel, what you're going to want to do is email this over to your web hosting company and have them place the JavaScript that's generated inside the header tags of your landing page. So um, I've already created one. We would enter that and uh, we would send that over. And then what we want to do is we want to go back to the Facebook main page and we're going to want to create an ad. So from here we can choose a number of campaigns that we can go after. Um, I typically like to choose the send people to your website. Uh, if you target these people correctly, this is usually a higher converting campaign and it's ultimately what we're trying to do. So we click that. And right here is where you want to enter that Google URL that we built previously. Uh, that's the tracking URL for Google Analytics. So we're going to flip back to our other screen and we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it right into here. And here we're going to also choose that pixel that we created in Facebook and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to marry the data collection that we have in Facebook as well as Google Analytics to get the ultimate form of tracking. Um, so once we have that selected, what we're going to want to do is set our audience and budget. And from here is where we start building out the targeted demographic of who we're going after. Um, I'm located in Baltimore, so naturally I want to try and capture people from that area. Uh, you can edit the mile radius that you want around the city, or you can choose the city itself. I'm going to also select a couple of neighboring towns that I know I'm driving web traffic from.
And here we can select what age range we want to go after. So uh, that might be a little bit low. So if we want to change this to maybe people who are between the ages of 25 and 55. And if we want to select gender specific men, women, or both, you can. Languages, if you want to go after a specific language speaking audience, you can do that as well. Uh, here's where it gets very targeted for automotive. Facebook actually has a partnership with Pulp Data. So what you can do is if you click into the box and under behaviors, there's an automotive section and you can drill down into there and you can see there's a section new vehicle shoppers in market. And you can actually target people who are in market consumers for Toyotas and we can actually also target owners of Toyotas as well. So based on what you're trying to achieve, you can select a very diverse demographic. Um, if you're trying to run more of Conquest campaigns, like let's say you're a Toyota dealer and you are promoting the new RAV4 that was just released and you really want to go over that, go after that uh, that maybe Ford Escape customer, that Nissan Road customer, that Honda CRV customer, you can create a landing page and specifically target owners of the Ford, Hyundai, Nissan, Ford model that you want to go after, drive them to there, and um, that creates a really good conquest campaign. If you scroll down, you can um, select your budget I typically choose to go with a lifetime budget as it allows me to see over a holistic view of how long this campaign is going to operate for and how much money I want to spend over the lifetime of this campaign. So let's say I wanted to start uh, March 1st and I wanted to start maybe at 10 in the morning. And I want this to go until the end of March, so the 31st. Same thing, we'll have it end at 10 in the morning. And what you'll see right here is the estimated daily reach. And that's how many people on a daily basis Facebook is estimating you will actually serve an ad to. Now this isn't unique necessarily, but these are people who nevertheless fall within your targeted demographic that you've selected up here. Um, the way you can edit how many people you're expected to reach within that time frame is there's a couple ways. You can change the amount of money in your budget. So let's say instead of $350 over the course of this budget, we want to spend $700. And you'll see this jumps up to $2,800 to $7,300 people over the course of this budget. Or you can um, shorten the duration of your campaign. So instead of ending this on the 31st, let's say we ended on the 25th, you'll see this now jumps up to, let's see, let's try the 16th, and we'll see that uh, this actually ups it to about 3,300 to 8,800 people in that entire duration. Um, so from here, what you would do is you would edit the ad set name. This should typically be the uh, demographics that you selected. Um, this is pretty good, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then from here, you just choose your ad creative. Uh, here's where you actually create your ad itself. Um, you can choose to upload a single image or multiple images, or you can even actually upload a video if you've done that as well. Um, if I'm not uploading a video, I usually choose to add multiple images and what Facebook will do is it will determine over time which picture is actually um, optimizing your campaign the best uh, by judging its web traffic from Facebook over to your website and based on the click-throughs and what you're trying to achieve it will actually start serving the image that is optimizing the campaign most frequently. Um, so what you can do from here, you can also link a, uh, a Facebook page. I always suggest doing that. Um, you can edit your headlines, which should be something catchy, usually a call to action that should get people to click onto your site. And then your text, um, just a little bit more about what this ad is about and why they're seeing it. 
Um, you can also edit where this ad will appear in the user's profile. So if you want to run solely just a mobile sort of campaign, maybe you want to click out the uh, desktop right column and the audience networks. Um, mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, you're pretty good to go. If there's anything else you want to change, you can do so here. And if you're ready to send this through, all you would do is hit place order. And um, yeah, you should be good. Hope this helps.